Hey, what's up, Husker Nation? My name is Logan Merrick, and this is Husker Central. In this video, we're going to be talking about Paul Feinbaum and his stupid, stupid statement about Matt Rule and the things that Matt Rule had to say. And we're also going to be talking about David Sanders and his visit to Lincoln uh, this past Friday. All that's coming up right now. All right, so I'm back. I'm pumped. Uh, football season is back. I don't claim to be a journalist, so I didn't decide. I just didn't want to keep this channel going and be talking about the same things that everybody's talking about. I'd rather just talk about football. And since football season is back, I'm pumped to be back. So if this is your first time here, consider subscribing. But what I do is, again, I'm not a journalist. I'm just a fan, just like you, massive Husker fan. And I love to look at uh, recruits. I love to take like look at film, look at what we're doing well uh, as far as Huskers are concerned, offense, defense, all those types of things. But I also live stream the game. So if you're looking for a place to hang out while you watch the game, uh, Come to this channel because I'm going to be live streaming the game uh, while and just talking about it and creating a place of community. So also some videos to expect before we jump into Paul Feinbaum and the other things. Uh, I'm going to be doing an unpacking of every single opponent this year, what I think they're going to do well, what I think the Huskers do well to stack up against what uh, maybe their weaknesses, how we can expose them, all those types of things. And so UTEP is the first one up. I've been watching a lot of UTEP, um, looking at a lot of the stuff with their new coach. Um, so I'm really excited to unpack that video and, of course, dreaded Colorado and that whole thing. So every opponent is going to be coming up here soon. Uh, but with that being said, let's get into David Sanders real quickly. Who is David Sanders if you're not familiar? David Sanders is the number two uh, pros high school prospect in the nation. He's the number one left or tackle uh, prospect in the nation. He is an absolute beast. I've watched his film. He is insanely athletic, big man. Um, I think it would be an absolute treasure to get him. My son and I went, Dylan Riola, if you didn't know, put out a tweet, just wanting everyone there that can get there because Dylan Riola was not there his first time through. So he's only been uh, to Nebraska one time. That was on Mother's Day. Dylan Riola was not here in Lincoln. And so Dylan Riola wanted to make sure he's been doing some hardcore recruiting, wanted to make sure he was here. So he picked him up from the airport. And uh, my son and I went there, and it was a great turnout, man. I thought it was awesome. It was so cool. My son got to get autographs from his favorite player, which is Malachi Coleman. Uh, he got to meet Matt Rule. He got to meet uh, Tony White, Coach Knighton, Coach Campbell. All those guys signed his hat. He was super pumped. But we also got to see David Sanders and his family come in. And let me tell you, like, he should have felt the pride of Husker Nation because uh, I felt a lot of pride just being there. If you were there, would you like this video? Comment down below that you were there. And uh, yeah, it was it was awesome. And I, I will say I get skeptical about five stars using Nebraska because I do think that we are the best uh, fan base in the country and not only the best fan base, but also from a social media standpoint, we will follow, we will like, we will do all the things to show you our love. And sometimes I feel like a lot of five-star prospects and four-star prospects use that in order to gain social media uh, kind of clout, and I absolutely hate that. So I'm tend I tend to be very skeptical of big star high school players, but I do think from everything that we're hearing from Husker Online, Sean Callahan, uh, Steve Wolfong, like we are seeing that Nebraska and Tennessee are the top two players in this game, which is amazing to see, um, and I think a lot of that has to do with. NIL coming together. And I do think a lot of it has to do with Dylan Riola and the fan base. Like we're just a great fan base. I, from uh, Sean Callahan was saying that uh, he still leans Tennessee. I mean, he goes there all the time. His family's not far from there. He's from North Carolina. So it's not a far trip. So, but let's just cross our fingers. I think we got a good chance. All that being said, David Sanders is now over to the side. I want to talk about Paul Feinbaum because this video absolutely pissed me off and so if you haven't seen it yet here it is head to head that early in the season i want you to hear i cannot wait to hear paul's reaction to nebraska's coach yeah. matt rule who yesterday said that he believes the newly constructed big 10 should have guaranteed bids to the playoff listen to this okay first off we're going to hear what matt rule had to say but mike greenberg being a typical media goofball says Matt rule guaranteed was he guarantee like he wasn't guaranteeing anything he was just pointing well let's just show the video this I think four teams from this league should get in get in every year because 
this is the best league. This is the NFL of college football in my mind. It stretches from coast to coast, different time zones, different weather. That's not to diminish any other league. The SEC is amazing. These other leagues are great, but the challenge in the Big Ten is going to be is going to be really difficult. Uh, so he says that. Okay, so let's just pause for a second before we hear Paul's stupid statements. He wasn't guaranteeing anything. He was merely pointing out that the Big Ten is an NFL style conference because they now span both sides of the country, right? And a lot of big men. They are on equal playing field to the SEC as far as talent. And he's just merely pointing out how large it is and how big we now, the, the Big Ten now spans in regards to playing. The NFL also plays the entire country. He's merely pointing those things out. He even says, no offense to the SEC. He wasn't taking a shot at the SEC. So no, Mike Greenberg, he wasn't guaranteeing. He was just saying, I don't see why we shouldn't have four, four teams in there because we are a great conference. That's what he's saying. So stop, stop it with that. That's twisting of words. Now, let's listen to Paul Feinbaum and his ridiculous, stupid statement. The Big Ten should just automatically get four teams in the playoff. Paul, what do you think of that? Matt, stay in your lane, okay? Job one, win enough games to get to some stupid bowl game. Don't worry about the big boys because you're not one of them. We saw what you did in the NFL. You were a complete disaster in Carolina. You somehow got this job in Nebraska, and you're talking like you belong at the, at the, at the table with Ohio State and Georgia. You don't. Just try to win maybe six games. Quit choking big games on the final play and leave the punditry to the professionals. Thank you. <laughs> this has been a public service announcement from Paul Fine. Leave the punditry to the professionals. You, you goofball. I mean, come on. All right. A couple, couple of things. We saw how you failed in North in Carolina. All right. First and foremost, let me just go through right off. The top of my head, college coaches, big name, successful college coaches that failed in the NFL. Let's start with your baby boy, Nick Saban. Nick Saban, the daddy of the SEC, failed miserably in the NFL. Lou Holtz, an absolute treasure of a football coach, failed in the NFL. Steve Spurrier failed in the NFL. Miserably. Great college football coach, by the way. Another SEC grandfather. Uh, Chip Kelly failed in the NFL. Urban Meyer, another SEC and Big Ten big-time coach. One in both conferences failed in the NFL. And, and Urban's was awful. It was worse than Matt Rule. But you worship at the altar of, Matt, of Urban Meyer, by the way, Paul Feinbaum. So... The other thing about Carolina and failing there, everyone fails in Carolina. You want to know why? Because David Tepper, the owner, if you're not familiar, David Tepper is very involved with things as an owner and uh, to the point where he didn't even let Frank Reich, who's a great coach, even make it through his first season taking over after Matt Rule because he wanted, Frank Reich said, C.J. Stroud should be the quarterback but, for, but David Tepper, the owner, said, no, I want Bryce Young. Bryce Young has been awful. Okay? No one is going to be successful in Carolina as long as David Tepper is in control or if David Tepper would just take a step back and be a normal owner. Don't And he's worse than Jerry Jones, in my opinion. So there's that. So, Paul Feinbaum, why don't you leave this to the rest of us who actually f follow college football and NFL football and not just the SEC and be a homer, okay? So there's that piece. Now, the other part about uh, what Paul Feinbaum says, why don't you quit choking in the big games and go win and leave this to the rest of the big boys? Okay, Matt Rule knows exactly where his team is. He's not being crazy. He's not saying he deserves to be in the national championship. He didn't say any of that. He was merely talking about the conference as a whole. He wasn't saying he was one of the big boys. By the way, Nebraska, whether you like it or not, is a blue chip college. Have, have we been irrelevant for all, the last 10 years? Yes, we've had some bad coaching. It's been bad. 
All of Husker Nation would admit that. That's why we have been upset. But Matt Rule is doing everything to turn that around right now. He is the guy. Living here in Lincoln, I watch it all very, very closely. He's the guy. And you can watch the episodes that they put out of the documentaries and stuff. And, and if you doubt that he's not the coach, go watch those. They're incredible. They're really well done. And you see what a great coach Matt Rule is. But Paul Feinbaum talking about leaving it to the big boys and this, that, and the other. Go win some random bowl game. I'm telling you right now, the Huskers this year will not be in a random bowl game. They will be in a bowl game, and it ain't going to be the Meineke Car Care Bowl against random Mac school or whatever. Like, I really believe that this year, not being a homer, just seeing it all, putting together the opponents, looking at the schedule, knowing what they have, they have a chance. So, Paul Pinebaum, go back to worshiping at the altar of the SEC and loving on your boys. They're at uh, Alabama and Auburn, Tennessee. And why don't you leave the punditry to those that actually know the Big Ten and actually listen to what the coaches are saying when they're giving, uh, uh, um, talking to the media, when they're, they're giving a press conference. We're not twisting words. We're listening to what they have to say. So that's it. Let me know what you thought of Paul Feinbaum's uh, if you if you thought it was great, fine. That's 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 your that's your opinion. Um, but if you thought it was terrible, would you like this video? Would you comment down below? Uh, some other coaches that have been great NFL coaches or been great college coaches, but maybe failed in the NFL. Uh, of course, Pete Carroll failed the first time, got a second go around. But let me know down below if you've got some ideas for some videos that you'd like to see. Um, I'm still seeing hate on the offensive line. I've got a video that you can view right here. Uh, where I break down why the offensive line was much better than you thought. I'm going to be doing a video here coming up, like I said, about UTEP. I'm also going to be looking at these documentaries that they've been doing, the NFL or the uh, the Huskers have been doing. I love them. But some things that really stood out to me watching the latest one about Dylan Riola. So that's it. Have a great rest of your day. If you would, consider subscribing to the channel. If you haven't already, would you consider sharing this with other Husker fans? Much love, much appreciate you. So pumped to be back. See you later.